Hi guys, it is a gray and gloomy, soon to be stormy, Ides of March. Yes, it is the Ides of March here on the uh, Point Lonesome Swamp and the collapse of global industrial civilization. That would be, I believe, Tuesday, March 15th, 2022. And uh, the little dog and I have to get off to eat a big factory farmed pig that my buddy is cooking up but I have just enough time just to bring you some good old some good old straight ahead doomer porn out of uh, either sheer post or common dreams can't remember the alert listener who sent this to me sorry about that keep sending in all the doom and gloom guys but uh, we're going to check in with the latest news about the methane bomb. I like to check in with uh, where the methane bomb is uh, every once in a while. So here's where the methane bomb is. About now, I'm going to put that little methane bomber. Uh, all right. Take it away and... Uh, not sure who the uh, writer here is, and whether it's Robert Shear. No, this is Jake Johnson from Common Dreams, <clears throat> reposted on Shear Post. Scientists, and I guess a few other people, scientists fear soaring methane levels show climate feedback loop has arrived. Yes, another feedback loop has arrived on the planet. <clears throat> fresh U.S. government data, <clears throat> yes, fresh data, spotlighting the rapid growth of atmospheric methane concentrations in recent years has scientists increasingly concerned that the human-caused climate crisis has triggered a vicious feedback loop, potentially resulting in unstoppable planetary warming. Researchers back in January, I think I remember touching on this, published in January by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, otherwise known as NOAA, showed that atmospheric concentrations of methane a greenhouse gas that is 80 times more potent than carbon dioxide over a 20-year period soared past 1,900 parts per billion in 2021, which ranked as the fourth warmest year on record. So we can only imagine where we're going with the next El Nino. As Nature reported on Tuesday, meaning last Tuesday, quote, the growth of methane emissions slowed around the turn of the millennium, but then began a rapid and mysterious uptick around 2007. And I, we've reported on that before here, quoting Nature Magazine, the spike has caused many researchers to worry that global warming is creating a feedback mechanism that will cause ever more methane to be released, make it a, making it even harder to rein in rising temperatures. Potential explanations for the methane surge range from the expanding exploitation of oil and natural gas and rising emissions from landfills to growing livestock herds and increasing activity by microbes in wetlands, close quote. You notice that nowhere in that sentence did you find the words uh, permafrost, for instance. Nowhere in, uh, in those list of candidates did you find the methane bomb blowing uh, up there in the Arctic. Uh, Ewan Nisbet, an earth scientist at Rural Holloway University of London, told Nature that, quote, 
methane levels are growing dangerously fast, close quote, as powerful countries around the world refuse to end the extraction of coal, natural gas, and other sources of the pollutant, said Nisbet. It's warming, feeding, it is warming, come on, I need my second pair, is warming, feeding the warming? That's an incredibly important question. As yet, no answer, but it very much looks that way. Close quote. <coughs> <coughs> yes, and then uh, I see that uh, our <coughs> old friend Elliot Jacobson. Uh, Elliot, did you realize you got a nod here? Elliot Jacobson from his website uh, with his little graph. Uh, Elliot ran a tweet and I think a YouTube, his own YouTube video recently. Here is the annualized methane graph showing the amount of methane entering the atmosphere over the last 12 months. Once again, the amount of new methane broke the previous record hitting 158.2 ppb over the last 12 months. Uh, now he is saying 158 while Nature is publishing 1,900. So I'm not sure what the discrepancy is. Now uh, Elliot has said that uh, he is pinning most of the blame on regular, regular wetlands such as the methane bomb that I am surrounded here in the Point Lonesome Swamp. But anyway, it's all, it's and, it's both and instead of either or. <clears throat> Back to the article. Scientists have long feared that the continued burning of fossil fuels risks setting in motion a chain reaction whose consequences, particularly ever more global warming, are irreversible, which is exactly what they are. They're irreversible at this point. <clears throat> While researchers are still working to discern the extent to which human activity is responsible for the alarming spike in atmospheric methane levels in recent years, Scientists have previously warned against categorizing certain causes of methane emissions, such as thawing permafrost, as natural, given that they are typically a result of human-driven warming. So maybe the stuff in the uh, temperate and tropical wetlands you can strike up to natural. There is nothing natural about the methane bomb blowing in the Tempofrost. <clears throat> this is uh, back to the Nature article from last week. Quote, regardless of how this mystery plays out, humans are not off the hook. Based on their latest analysis of the isotopic trends, uh, NOAA scientist Zen Land's team estimates that anthropogenic sources of methane, such as livestock, agricultural waste, landfills, and fossil fuel extraction, accounted for about 62% of total methane emissions from 2007 to 2016, and you can believe that's going up. NOAA's latest figures were released months after the IPCC warned in its 2021 landmark report that atmospheric methane levels are now currently higher than at any point during the last 800,000 years. Uh, 
Despite such a dire finding, global policymakers took few steps to substantively address methane emissions at COP26 in November, while dozens of additional countries signed on to pledge to reduce methane emissions by 30 percent from 2020 levels by the end of the decade, climate groups argued that pledges are just words on a page without concrete action to make them real. Amid the COP26 talks, the Biden administration unveiled rules aimed at cutting U.S. methane emissions, but critics said they do not go nearly far enough. The U.S. is the second largest emitter of methane in the world uh, behind China. This is Julie McNamara of the Climate and Energy Program at the Union of Concerned Scientists. Quote, for too long we have known the damaging impacts of this, po this potent heat-trapping pollutant. We have known that oil and gas operations continue to be major sources of it and known that solutions to drive rapid reduction across the sector already exist. Yet still, oil and gas operations continue to release untenably high and entirely preventable methane emissions. Swiftly reducing methane emissions will result in significant and much needed near-term climate progress. Yes, and the moon is made of green cheese. Uh, but anyway, uh, now that I've done my self-righteous uh, eco preaching for the day, I have to get in my gas-sucking truck and uh, head over to my buddy's house for a big pile of factory farmed pork. I highly suggest you get out there and uh, enjoy some factory farmed pork while you still can. Bye guys.